Hallo en welkom bij de Reykjavik Grijpijn Nieuwskast. Mijn naam is Walu Kratjesson. Ik ben de editor in chief van de Reykjavik Grijpijn. Uh, today is Thursday, a wonderful day. Uh, late August, a bit chilly, but it's nice. Uh, before we start, I want to remind you that tomorrow is actually the last day you can buy the, the discount boxes. On a discount, I guess. I don't know. But, uh, but you get lava locks with it. And you saw it in my last... Uh, uh, newscast, we go, me and Art, we always go to the volcano, uh, which is, of course, uh, still silenced, N nothing going on there, uh, except, of course, beautiful lava landscape and <laughs> this crazy nature. Uh, but uh, if you want, you can buy uh, our wall, well, like just all of our discount boxes. Doesn't really matter what it is, uh, but we will always give you a, a lava lump with it. Uh, and uh, but after that, after tomorrow, uh, I think you only get it if you buy the, the volcano boxes. But then again, I, I might be wrong, but, uh, but uh, I mean, so it goes. Uh, but let's go for the news. It's quite a grim uh, news day, but uh, we need to do that also, right? We need to start on the, the biggest issue that have happened this summer, basically, for in Iceland. Uh, there was a horrible tragedy, a murder that happened in a small town called Blundu Ós. Uh, for those that have driven uh, the ring road in Iceland, you probably know this town, you, you've been there, but perhaps don't remember it. Uh, this town is the last one that uh, you, you pass before you go to the town of Akureyri is you go up to a pass afterwards and so on. It's a fairly small town for in Icelandic standards. Uh, only 950 people live there. And it's a very peaceful, quiet and a nice town. There's a big river that goes through it. Um, you go over a, like a river, like a, a bridge. Uh, and, it's, uh, and we always stop there and have something to eat there or something like that. It's, it's that kind of a town. So... Uh, this town is interesting, uh, it's in the news right now, because basically there was a murder there. Uh, there was a young, like a, not a young man, it was a man, it was in his uh, 30s, mid-30s. Uh, he seems to have broken into uh, a home with their old, like couple in their, their middle age, uh, in, their, in their 50s. Uh, and uh, he attacked them with a shotgun shot the, the husband in the stomach and he killed his wife with the shotgun also. Uh, not only that, but uh, at the same time, uh, there seems to have like his, the, the couple, like the married couple's uh, son and their uh, daughter-in-law were there with a the newborn. Uh, the man, the son seems to have, this is all, all quite unclear, but what we do know is that the son actually uh, came uh, out of his room, of course, because this was six in the morning, uh, and he saw what had happened, and he uh, fought this uh, attacker, and he killed him, which is something that uh, we haven't really seen in Iceland. Uh, I mean, I haven't seen a tragedy like this for, like, ever uh, in my journalism career. Now... Uh, this was absolutely horrible in so many ways. It seems that this man was very uh, like the attacker, the murderer. He was mentally unstable, uh, but not only that, he was obsessed with this couple because, uh, like, and, and like, there are many like unclear news here. But uh, one of the narratives that the, the, the media is going with is that this family. Uh, like the man was a manager with a big company in this town. Uh, and he decided to give the kid a, ch a chance. He was, he was, uh, he was having trouble uh, and uh, he's, he was trying to help him out, gave him work, but it didn't work out. So what happened is that he actually laid him off uh, and the man somehow became fixated on this family. We're not sure exactly why or how. But what we know is that earlier this summer, this man actually uh, was arrested by the police, the same man, this murderer, uh, in the street where this couple actually lives. Um, <clears throat> and, he, uh, and he was armed with a gun. Uh, and the, the, the neighbor saw him, 
called the police. They came and they arrested the man. They took uh, took away all of his guns. Um, and the, the thing is that... Um, just go over the gun thing a little bit afterwards. I'll, I'll explain that also. But what happened is that he was uh, he was admitted to a psychiatric uh, ward, uh, but for some reason he got a day pass. Uh, it seems that he had a, like a day pass or something like that. Uh, and he came back to Blontos, and then he actually murdered this woman uh, and wounded this man very seriously. And, of course, was killed uh, by the son of this couple. Now... The son was arrested. Uh, he might actually be prosecuted for this, but it's very unclear right now how all of that will go. So it's, it's too early to say anything about it. Uh, but, uh, but what happened is basically that uh, uh, this man was killed, the murderer, after he killed this uh, woman, and she was in her mid-50s, mid mid uh, and uh, the man is still fighting for his life, after being shot in the stomach, uh, and it's it's horrible. He's been through two uh, uh, two separated uh, surgeries, and uh, and the only thing we know is that he's fighting for his life. Uh, it's unclear if he's going to survive it or not, but right now it feels like he, he hopefully is going to survive this. Now, uh, first of all. Uh, of course, murders happen in Iceland, like everywhere else. Uh, they are often very, like, uh, like, like drug-related, uh, and not many of them are like are not many uh, killings are in Iceland when using firearms. But we have had uh, seven cases past uh, past 30 years in 1990 that we have had uh, murders where guns were used. And keep in mind, Icelanders, we have. Uh, just under 90,000 guns uh, in, our, in our homes. Uh, and uh, the, the, uh, remember, we are 370,000. So it's gun, like one gun by every three person or something. Uh, we use this always to hunt. That's, that's the thing. We don't allow automatic weapons, anything like that. But we have weapons, definitely. Uh, I don't know what to say about this. This is absolutely horrible. Uh, the the family, which is a very like, uh, uh, th these are people that are not very used to being in the spotlight of the media or anything like that. Uh, this has been also very hard for them, especially from the media. They have uh, they have, for example, been criticized criticizing the media uh, for how they have been going around with this case. But then again, um, the media said like, this is of course incredibly uh, like. Uh, shocking event. Uh, it is not unusual that there is uh, media covered, coverage and that it's aggressive as well. I mean, Icelanders are divided about this, but, uh, but the thing is, of course, Icelanders also just want news about this. So, uh, when it comes to, of course, violent crimes in Iceland, like we have around 1.6 murders per year, statistically. Uh, of course, we don't kill one and a half person. <laughs> But, uh, but that's the statistics. Sometimes we have one murder, sometimes we have two. Uh, and very seldom we have three uh, murders in one year. But it, it's, uh, that, that happens like once in a, like in a decade almost. So, murder in Iceland, this is the thing. The police, the chief of police actually in, the, in this town, he has uh, apologized to the, to the people that knew these couple, uh, mostly because... Uh, uh, they like uh, like they told the media too early about this tragedy and so on. It's like I know it, it sounds probably a, a bit weird if you're from like a big city, but Icelanders can be quite uh, sensitive about this, uh, and and naturally so. I mean, it's not like we have a murder every year or well, every day. Uh, so this has been very like uh, this has been hard for Icelanders in many ways. But what we know is that the, the murder, murderer was unstable. What we're waiting for now, basically, is to see if this, this man will survive it and if the son will be indicted for actually killing him, killing the, 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 the murderer of his mother. Uh, also, <coughs> uh, Ingeberg Solrún is a, I know, <laughs> it's an Icelandic name. Uh, she used to be a foreign minister. This woman is, uh, she is like a, 
She was also the mayor of Reykjavik for a, almost a record time. She was here for 10 years, a mayor, mayor here. Uh, and she was a foreign minister and she's absolutely brilliant politician. She was in the Social Democratic Party, was one of the, like the towers of politicians in Iceland. She quit po- politics a while ago and she's been working in Afghanistan and, and like uh, with NATO, I think, and, and, and other like <clears throat> other things like that. And she has been appointed as like one of three persons in a committee that is investigating actually uh, the um, possible war crime in Ukraine, where a prison was actually was blown up, uh, possibly by the Ukrainians or the Russians. Uh, but uh, that's what, of course what, what it's all about. But uh, there was Ukrainian uh, POWs that were in that prison, uh, and uh, like the Ukrainian government have said that. Uh, that the Russian blew this up by themselves because they were trying to hide that they have been torturing these men. Uh, the Russians, of course, say that uh, the Ukrainians uh, blew up the prison. And Ingeber Solrun, she is the chairman of the committee, and she is now going to investigate this gruesome attack, which is interesting because, uh, I mean, uh, Icelanders are... Uh, we don't often have, like, a direct connection with with uh, wars like this but uh, it's definitely an interesting uh, position that she is in also she is quite brilliant this woman she is very highly respected by many but she's also highly controversial when it comes to politics but that's politics of course we know that uh, and also uh, the, the the president of Iceland he actually said that this uh, attack was of course intolerable uh, for example uh, the reason he said this is because we are now celebrating that there is 31 years since the Baltic states, like uh, Estonia, Latvia, all of these countries there, became independent. And Iceland was the first country, actually, that acknowledged the independence of these countries. Uh, this is interesting because uh, Icelanders, they, we know like, how important it is, actually, to have that some other nation uh, like, recognize your independence uh, and therefore, this has a huge diplomatic uh, effect in many ways. And it did so for the Baltic Sea, uh, the, the Baltic countries, sorry. sorry. And we have been uh, celebrating this, and Icelanders take this very seriously because we are incredibly uh, proud of our own, own independence, and we are incredibly proud also of having, tri- having uh, a part of this history. So in Iceland, of course, we have these... Uh, uh, like a celebration in, in the university, we're going over this and so on. And uh, the, the president of Iceland has been used this opportunity uh, both to like assess the, the situation because, uh, of course, these countries are all in NATO, uh, except Ukraine. U- Ukraine was actually the, the only country in the area, well, not the only country, but like of these countries, they are trying to be closer to the Baltic, uh, Baltic countries, but... Uh, but the Baltic countries are in NATO, but Ukraine was not, for example. And he's also said that this was a, a very correct decision by, by the Baltic countries to actually uh, become a part of NATO, because, uh, the, of course, for example, in the Polish, uh, Poland, uh, and all of these countries around are now quite stressed that, uh, you, like, if, if Russia will win this war, which they hopefully will not do, uh, they they will not stop at Ukraine, but try to make um, to re- remake the old uh, Soviet Union empire almost, just call it something else. Uh, but enough of that. Uh, 1.7 million tourists are expected to visit Iceland this year, which is considerably more than we expected. I have to say I am quite surprised because. COVID was uh, dominating our lives for the first, remember, perhaps we're starting to forget this, but it was dominating everything from January to what, Mars, February, March. But still we have now 1.7 million tourists. And keep in mind, in uh, 2019, before everything was locked down, we had around 2.4 million tourists. So we are not that far off, actually, from where we were Uh, before the pandemic. I would say this is uh, quite something. And why did this happen? Well, (laughs) you know why. Uh, It's obviously because of the volcano. The volcano has, of course, uh, lifted everything up considerably. 
meaning that we are having now uh, 1.7, and they estimate, the Central Bank in Iceland, they estimate that we will have uh, 1.9 million tourists uh, next year, and which is remarkable, actually. This is an incredibly quick recovery, to be honest. Uh, not only that, we are... Uh, <clears throat> Um, our employment is going down very rapidly. We are down to 4.5 percent. Uh, we are mostly like between three and four percent, so it's, it's quite low. Uh, and but yeah, uh, but we're heading for a tough economical winter, though. Uh, so this is actually good news that we have uh, these uh, th this mass tourism in Iceland. Uh, mass tourism. I mean, it's not that much really. Uh, but we are now. Uh, yeah, we are now. The central bank raised the policy interest rates by 0.75% this week. This might be interesting for you because uh, I'm guessing that it's the same discussion that you're going through in your own home country, uh, these policy interests and, and, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and there will be a struggle for improved wages and working conditions. And this will probably be a quite a hard fight this winter. This means that we are probably going to look at some strikes. Uh, not a, not, I'm not sure if it's, any of it will be connected to the tourist industry, but uh, th this might be something. We have a very strong union culture in Iceland, uh, and it, it's, it's for sure that we will see something, uh, so, some, some like hard fight when it comes to this. Uh, the central bank is mostly trying to cool down the housing market, uh, which has skyrocketed, and it adds brutally to our inflation. It's not the same in all countries, but this is how it is in Iceland. Like. Uh, our housing prices actually goes up. And for example, young people buying houses uh, in, the, in COVID, uh, they, they will be hurt the most because of this inflation going up. Uh, and it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But yeah, uh, so we have murder. I uh, wouldn't say uh, like a, it's not like a financial crisis we are in, but it feels like we're going to, this, this winter is going to be something else, right? Uh, this is it for the news today. Uh, please uh, check out our homepage, uh, like just basically our links down here. Check out our volcano boxes, uh, boxes or just discount boxes, uh, and and you will get a, a lump of lava. And it's it's actually it, it's quite something. It's very different to from uh, everything you know probably. So you will uh, you it, it will be nice uh, on top of everything else. Uh, and uh, like and subscribe, and if you want to become a member uh, with us, uh, then we have membership also. We have been adding a lot of people, so welcome to be with us. We are going to uh, uh, do a lot of shows for the winter. Uh, well, a lot, I mean, like as much as we can, of course. Uh, we want to uh, go into crimes that change, change Iceland, uh, and we want to do more travel and so on, and see what, what happens here. But so there is a lot to uh, a lot that is going to happen this winter, and you're going to gain a lot, hopefully. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching, uh, and and goodbye. Cody. Yeah, yeah. Oh.